We are now printing a whole human lung from a hundred US dollars to point seventy cents. In the future, we'll be able to print a steak on a bone. I'm interested more in uh, experiments that failed. 在科幻电影里啊，我们经常会看到超级英雄和邪恶势力去抢夺具有超能力的元素。那随着科学在新材料领域不断取得突破，科幻即将变成现实。以色列最顶尖的科学家之一欧迪·肖西耶夫在做的就是去发现大自然中隐藏的超能力，提取不同的元素，合成新材料。应用在医疗、电子产品、食品、服装等领域，对于工业发展和人类生活，有可能会带来意想不到的变革。Very unique job in mining nature for its adaptive and essential qualities for industrial and personal use. So first, please help us understand how does nature grow materials and how do humans make materials? That's actually uh, quite simple. I mean, uh, uh, nature uh, uh, doesn't need any help. Uh, <laughs> uh, so um, every uh, living organism, whether it's a plant or a fish or human being, is uh, composed of uh, cells. And the cells contain DNA, and the DNA encodes for nanobiobuilding blocks. They recognize each other and self-assemble into scaffolds uh, on which the cells are growing and proliferating, and, and then develop into tissues, and the tissues organize into organs. While we human, uh, when we build things, um, we actually uh, build a. Uh, top to bottom. One very important feature why it's very different is because um, we are limited by the resolution of our hands or the equipment. Nature is so much more advanced and, and, and we need to learn from nature. Mm, so your job is helping us to learn from nature, to grow materials that are like materials in the nature that are responsive to the environment. Once we realize that nature uh, really made uh, materials that are so much better than what we have ever been able to make with synthetic uh, uh, materials, um, then, then our life will be much better. One which uh, I, I really uh, uh, like a lot, and we've been doing a, a quite a bit of work on that, is a human collagen. Human collagen, uh, or collagen in general, uh, for us, for human, uh, is extremely important. In fact, uh, this is the most abundant material in our body. Many medical implants uh, that are made of collagen, not just uh, dermal fillers or wrinkles or augment, augment lips, but they're like artificial meniscus, uh, bone grafts, and even leaflets of heart valves that, that are made of collagen. So we already have it. We, we already have it, but that's, that's the, the problem. The problem is so far, this, the only source of, of collagen for all these medical implants was dead bodies dead pigs, dead cows, and also for human cadavers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So I, not I'm not very so, pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not a very safe source. So we cloned all the five human genes from human that are responsible for making human collagen mm. and introduced it into a single tobacco plant. So now the plant has the ability to make human collagen. And they grow them for about 50, 60 days. And from that, we make different medical implants. The two of them already completed clinical trials, already got uh, uh, regulatory approval in, in Europe and in Israel, and they're already starting making sales. And, and this is really a revolution. What kind of implants? The one that, that uh, I feel uh, so happy uh, to, to develop was the first one, uh, which is indicated for a diabetic foot ulcer. There, there are uh, a lot of different uh, methods to, to cure uh, uh, and diabetic foot ulcer and collagen is dominating. And we found out that the, the, the one that is uh, produced by plants, which is identical to the human, outperform uh, uh, all of those. Uh, so the reason I'm so uh, proud of that is because my mother is, is also suffer from a diabetic foot ulcer. She already uh, lost two toes. And, and uh, 
uh, a, a few months ago, she had another uh, ulcer. At that time, we already uh, got the regulatory approval for uh, our human collagen, and um, I, immediately I went to uh, the surgeon. I told him, "Hey, <laughs> use this." <laughs> use that. And remarkably, in 14 days, she she had recovery. Your family uh, benefited from your discovery. So, so that that was really uh, uh, quite moving. Cell membrane protein is one of the most important ingredients in human body. Cell membrane protein is found in five genes of human body in human cells that are used to produce the most high quality cell membrane protein. We found many applications in the medical field of healthcare now. So, with collagen, then I can see a lot of application, like potential application for this, right? Uh, absolutely. We develop uh, a, uh, a special kind of collagen that you can use in in 3D printing. Uh, it's called bio ink. Mm. Um, and we are now printing a whole human lung. <laughs> now that that may sound like mm. science fiction, but it's really not. I mean, in 2021, so it's like uh, around the, the corner. We will have uh, uh, first a, a printed lung in human. This is just the first organ. I mean, we're working also with another company on artificial cornea. And it's the same principle, I guess, when, it, when you apply it to other You audience. could do it for liver, you could do it for, for kidney probably, for heart. I mean, for almost everything. Again, there are still challenges, but I think the combination of, you know, these new biomaterials and the, the, the stem cell research, which is so advancing these days, together, it will meet in the clinic very soon. <laughs> 墨水放进打印机里就会印出字来。那如果放进打印机里的是一种特殊的胶原蛋白，我们将得到什么呢？肖斯耶夫教授着迷于植物研究，从大自然里获得的超能力比我们想象中来得更神奇。So you're doing a lot of these, you know, interesting things. So what do you see as the, the most sort of exciting and like, potential big breakthroughs? One really important thing is uh, biologic drugs. I'll give you one example by, uh, of one very important biologic drug, which is it's called Umira, produced by AbbVie, it's an American company. I mean, it's sold for $16 billion annually. This is the biggest drug ever. But the big, one big problem, it's very expensive. Only one out of 1,000 people in the world that would like to enjoy Umira can actually use it. Mm. It is expensive because it is produced by mammalian cells. So these are uh, very special uh, cells that, that, that we have to grow them in, in very special bioreactor, which is very expensive. So we said, okay, why do we produce it in mammalian cells? Mm. So we cloned the genes of the Umira antibody and introduce it into a plant, just like we did with the collagen, so into tobacco plant, from a hundred US dollars to, to point 70 to cents. 70 cents. And can you apply the same principle to other absolutely. biomedicines? Uh, absolutely. In fact, we have in the pipeline already another. So then you can disrupt the whole sector then? <laughs> I believe so. You just need to, I guess, grow as much as you can. Of course. To, uh, of to, course. to keep up with the supply. Yes. 下节我们继续走进肖斯耶夫教授充满奇思妙想的科学世界，探索大自然中各种材料在人类世界中的应用。除了打印人体器官 ，3D 打印机的另一个功能和我们的日常生活更加息息相关，那就是打印食物。方便生活之外，肖斯耶夫表示 ，3D 打印食物更大的意义在于缓解动物养殖业对于自然环境带来的压力。As you know,、um Today, most of the protein that, that we、um, consume in the world comes from uh, uh, animals. Uh, animal farming is a huge industry, but very unsustainable.、Uh, I'll give you a few numbers.、Um, you know, the、uh, 30% of world agricultural land is consumed by this industry. 25% of all the good drinking water goes to this industry. The greenhouse gases that that, that industry produces is that of all the cars, all the trucks, together with all the ships, airplanes combined together. Not sustainable. But people like 
the, the feel, you know, uh, and the texture mm. that meat has. People uh, are so used to it, thousands of years, that's how your body works. Exactly. So, so we, we decided to try and, and, and solve that problem uh, by a, a combining unique uh, fibers that, that actually comes from, from plants uh, together with the protein and with, with technologies like 3D printing, we can now generate uh, these textures, uh, uh, meat-like textures. So meat like textures and also it tastes like meat? It tastes like, mm. it tastes like meat. It's still, you know, if you talk about, for example, these uh, products, you still need all the supply chain, okay? So, so meaning uh, the refrigeration and, and you know, probably to free, you know, fro frozen, then you have to defrost it and, and then to grill it. Uh, and that also is quite expensive. Mm. So we, th we thought, uh, why don't we assemble everything at the end of the chain. And 3D printing or 3D printers enable you to do that by printing layer by layer and then combining with a cooking head that actually enable you at the three-dimensional space to decide if you want to bake or to fry <laughs> or to grill at very high resolution. So as it prints, as it, it cooks prints. Exactly. at the same time. At the same time, layer by layer by layer. That enable you really to, uh, uh, to get a full product, like, a, like a, a burger, okay, that now have also the, uh, the gastronomic sensations that, not, uh, that even were not existed before. For, I'll give you an example. I mean, a regular burger is always, be always that, um, crispy from the outside, but you know, soft in the inside. Mm. But we can actually have something that is also crispy in the inside and maybe soft the outside. Because it's not regular cooking anyway. Yeah. Exactly. In the future, we'll be able to print a steak on a bone that maybe in the middle will have something that feels like pâté foie gras. <laughs> wow. So it, it's endless. And the nice thing about this technology is that uh, it communicates with uh, you know, smartphone applications. So you can actually uh, uh, sit in your office and you know like 10, 15 minutes from now you're going to finish. So you just mm -hmm. open the application, select the burger that you want to that eat, you wanna eat mm -hmm. and, you know, according to uh, the recipe of that chef, of the other, or maybe you can, you can change your ingredient. Like for example, you say, I don't want so much fat, so reduce my, uh, mm -hmm. some fat or, or uh, add more salt or less salt, or whatever. It's all personalized. It's personalized. But one people go for the taste, the other one is nutrients. Like, does it supply the same kind of nutrients as meat? It's up to you. I mean, you can actually include in wherever you want uh, your vitamins, or if you need uh, more of that. Xiao CFO 无时无刻不在细心观察大自然，发掘自然界的奇妙之处。相信好的科学发现，总有一天可以找到应用的地方。怀抱好奇之心，让他偶遇对于动物蛋白的研究。All the organisms, uh, billions of years. Uh, to develop, you know, some of the most amazing materials. And I, I'll give you just uh, uh, one example that I like, and that's, you know, cat fleas. You know, cat fleas have this ability to jump as high as, you know, 100, 200 times their height. A person standing in the middle of Manhattan and in a single jump go to the top of the Empire State Building. There is a very special material, uh, which is called resilin. It's a special protein that, that, that cat fleas make and, and in simple words, it's, it's the best rubber on earth. The reason why I started to work with, with uh, cat fleas uh, was because of one of my students, actually. And he came to me one day uh, and said that uh, his, his, actually his uh, dog had fleas. He was telling you about the problem. So what's the problem? He said, well, you know, it's annoying. You have to put these chemicals in it. And um, uh, why don't we think about a better uh, way? And we said, why don't we uh, find an, a, a, an important, an essential protein in, in these fleas and um, clone the gene and, and produce the protein and then inject it into the dog. And now the dog will produce antibodies against <laughs> it. So to immunize it, you know, bottom line failed. <laughs> it didn't work. By itself, uh, uh, caused us to start and, and look at these very special proteins in cat fleas and and we got interested 
you know, in a totally different thing. We say, hey, these guys can jump <laughs> so high and they have this beautiful protein. So we thought, oh, we can use those proteins for other purposes. Mm -hmm. And that's how we, we got attracted. But once you get attracted, then how do you find the use? Actually, there, for, for, for resilin, there, there are a lot of interesting applications. I mean, we are now uh, working uh, uh, with the uh, a, a, a footwear uh, companies uh, to uh, uh, develop, uh, you know, sports shoes uh, for people that uh, would like to have uh, better performance, you know, run faster, jump uh, higher. You could think of, uh, you know, touch screens uh, that will be more flexible, uh, uh, adhesive glues. I mean, there. Uh, even suspensions uh, for motorcycles or for cars. Practically everything that, that you can do with rubber, you could probably do better with resilin. But can you find a lot of it for industrial use? Of course, uh, if you try to extract it from uh, uh -huh. catalysts, okay. uh, then, then no. <laughs> but uh, that's the nice thing about uh, you know, biotechnology, that, that, uh, that we've been able to take the gene that encodes for the resilin and introduce it into plant and also to bacteria so now we can produce a lot of that. Shihuisan you're mo one of the most uh, prolific inventors now of the university. <laughs> so, but you've come a far way, like a long way. I remember reading about this. So, when you were applying to college, you don't have uh, good enough grades to get into, you know, the chemistry department of Hebrew University. But you persuaded them to take a chance on you. <laughs> That's true. Actually, I, I was uh, as, as a student in high school. I was uh, a terrible student. I. Uh, Why were you a terrible student? Because I was bored. I was bored and, and I, I, had, I, I was inspired by other things. I mean, I, I liked chemistry and I, I had my chemistry lab at home. Where did that love come from? I, I have to give credit to my parents. They, they really encouraged us. I mean, they, uh, every time we used to, to go and ask them for, uh, you know, transistors and uh, all this kind of uh, stuff uh, for building and they, uh, they didn't understand what we were doing, but they, they said, okay, you just make a list and tell us how much uh, it cost and they believed in us. Despite the fact that uh, um, I didn't do well uh, in, the, uh, in high school. By the way, my, my brother the same. My, my brother actually was kicked out of high school. Um, nevertheless, later, later on he, he became a medical doctor. I, when I came to the university, uh, it was already after the army. And um, I was not accepted. Uh, so I, I told them and say, hey, why don't you give me a chance? Because I, I, I know I, I, can, I can study. I, I know I can do it. <laughs> and one of the professors there uh, asked me, he said, you know what, I think you're wasting your uh, parents' uh, money. <laughs> mm. uh, you know, with your grades, um, you don't have a chance to, to finish even the semester. Mm. Uh, just go and find something else to do. You know, university is not for you. But what persuaded them, you think? That, I had the motivation. And, and uh, uh, that year, I didn't see uh, the sunlight. I was studying like crazy. And I, I worked really very hard. And uh, I, I, I made a record. You know, I think it was my, um, my uh, average was 99.7, something unbelievable. <laughs> And in fact, uh, that also changed uh, my uh, attitude towards uh, students because I, I uh, in fact, I, I never look at grades. When, when someone uh, uh, writes me an email and says, I would like to come, uh, you know, to do my master's or PhD with you, I, I will always uh, ask them to come for an interview and I don't even look at the grades. Because I think that everybody uh, needs a chance. But what do you think that made you successful that's not measurable by grades? I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's really uh, uh, what I believe I have in science is I, I, never, uh, I, 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 I never look for, uh, you know, long-hanging hang, fruits. 
I, I'm looking for these really big things that can, can make a significant change. And, I'm, I'm, and it's okay with me to fail. I'm, I'm easy to fail. I, can, uh, there's, I have no problem with that. Uh, because I, ha I, I have my self-confidence and, and I can, I, I can uh, uh, get a punch and come back. And, and to be in the front in, in science and technology, uh, it's always uh, mainly failing. I, I failed so many times, much more than, than the success, but that's okay. And, and, and for me, it's also uh, you know, it's also the, the different way I look at science. I'm interested more in uh, experiments that failed. When you design an experiment that succeeded, it means that you had an hypothesis, you thought about the mechanism, and you just proved to yourself that you were right. Mm -hmm. So you didn't really progress in science at all. You just, you know, proved something that we, you, you, already, not, know. you already know. But when you, f you fail, or you think you failed, or maybe something is hiding there, they can teach, um, uh, teach us about something totally different. And, and that's where discoveries uh, come from. Well, the side products of the experiment yes. tell something. Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm looking for people that, that uh, don't look for the obvious, and people that can be resilient and, 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 and ambitious mm. and, and, and be ready to work hard to get to the target. Xiaoxian 他对身边的一切的事物都抱有极大的兴趣谢谢收看乌镇领航者为您播出亚居乐地产筑梦天下